The Saramonic SRVRM1 is a very compact recording device that connects directly to XLR microphones. It has a backlit menu display with audio volume control and a selectable low cut filter. It provides 48 volts phantom power and is capable of recording up to 24 bit 48 kilohertz wave audio files directly onto a micro SD card of up to 32 gigabytes. It's powered by just two AA batteries and is capable of recording for up to eight hours on them. A 32 gigabyte memory card can store up to 60 hours of audio recorded at a maximum quality or up to 180 hours of audio recorded at 16 bit 24 kilohertz. To connect the Saramonic recorder to your microphone, there's a female XLR socket at the top and it's spring loaded. And when you push down on that, it locks so that the microphone won't come off. So what you do is you just line up the pins. You get your microphone, line up the pins, push. I use my body because I don't like to push on the cage of the microphone. Push until it clicks. And there you go. It's now fitted and it's rock solid. It's not going to go anywhere. And then off you go. You turn it on and off you go. Now, one thing I, I do a lot of is I use dynamic microphones because they're less prone to picking up sounds around. So what I do is I want to make this more sensitive. So to, in order to do that, I use this thing, which is a Triton FET head. And the Triton FET head, it's, this is the filter version. It takes 48 volts phantom from the uh, recorder. It boosts the input so that your dynamic mic is really incredibly loud. You can, you can then turn the gain of the Saramonic right down and avoiding noise problems. So the Triton FET head goes into the microphone like that and then you plug into the recorder. I'll use the same method. I use the body, not the cage, because you could um, you could do damage to the cage, I think, if you push down on it and dent it. So push it till it clicks. And they have a slightly larger package, but it's much more uh, dynamic and it's way, way louder. You turn on the Saramonic and turn on the uh, Phantom Power. And once you've got the Phantom Power on, I find with the Dynamic, I'm using the, uh, the gain on the Saramonic right at the bottom of its range. And that way um, you get so little noise, it's unbelievable from a dynamic and terrific sensitivity. Okay, you're looking at me in the mirror at the moment, so you've got a backwards image. But what I'm gonna show you is a little trick that I use in order to set gains. Now, one thing you can do is you can get the Saramonic and uh, attach it first of all to a patch lead in order to see that tiny screen because it can be difficult to set up. Or what I do is I switch it on and when I switch it on, I use the mirror actually. So I, I go up to the mirror and literally speak into the uh, thing there and watch the meter in the mirror. Check one, two, three, and there you go. I've got a decent audio going now and uh, I know that that's gonna work. So uh, that's one way that you can set the gains without having to go to the bother of uh, um, attaching patch leads. But I know that people do attach patch leads to these things and then look at the meter, set up the volume, and uh, once the volume's set, that's it, you're off, off you go. But I find it easier to just walk up to the mirror and check myself uh, to see that uh, I'm not peaking. The meter isn't that clear and um, you've got to be very careful setting the audio so that you don't peak. Um, it flashes right to the top very quickly so that literally you can barely see what's going on. It's not a great meter. So it's best to err on the, the low side. And so I generally aim at about halfway up when the meter's peaking halfway up. That's about the right place. But the use of the mirror is a great trick to get your audio at the right volume with not too much fuss. One great advantage of using these recorders is that they enable you to go out and about with a high quality recorder attached to your microphone with no wires. You can use them handheld, boomed. You can use a pencil mic as a portable microphone. Or even if you want to, use a studio mic mobile. Some people may feel that using one of these is a bit inconvenient in comparison to using um, a microphone on top of your camera, like a shotgun. But um, for me, the improvement in audio quality is really worth it. So this is me talking on the Saramonic now, and for the filming here, I'm using the Yi Light. So just to compare, I'm gonna do two shots from the same position. 
This is the shot of me taken on the Yi light using the Saramonic recorder. This is a shot of me using the Yi light, but I'm using the Yi light internal microphone. Now you can probably see straight away or hear straight away that uh, the sound isn't quite as clear and the Yi is one of the better cameras for audio. The reason being, of course, the camera is basically about six to eight feet away from me, whereas this microphone is right here close by. So the audio is going to be improved no matter what microphone you're using on your camera. Seriously, sound is important on video. Please subscribe if you like my videos. Cheers for now.